What is going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today we're going to talk to you on VinFast. It's been a while since I've given a VinFast update, so I want to go over some of the current data points, what's been coming out from the company itself, and whether right now is a good time to invest or not. Before I get into any of that, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I always greatly appreciate that. And with that said, let's get right to it. Right now it is down 3.92%, piggybacking off of the broader market's kind of downward motion as a kind of byproduct of CPI. So CPI came out both on on a year over year and month over month did not meet the forecast. So 3.1 versus 2.9 for the year over year and then 0.3 versus 0.2 for the month over month. Even if you look at the true data behind the scenes, it does show that the energy basket did go down 0.9, meaning other basket items did go up. So that's not necessarily the best, and that is in turn causing a lot of the broader market to just to panic, even enough so that the fear and greed index has gone from 78 down to 71. So from extreme greed to, I guess, higher part of greed. I don't know if that makes sense. But as far as volume over the last little bit it has been diminishing so far, about 299,000 shares being traded 2.3 million is the average. So you can kind of tell just people's interest in VinFast is diminishing. And over the last little bit, a lot of stocks have gained more and more momentum. So kind of a FOMO aspect. VinFast has been flat. So some of the recent news that did come out, um, again, my apologies, it's been a while since I've given a VinFast update. So this might be old news, but on the 18th, they did give their actual numbers, delivering production for Q4, did show good growth on the quarter by quarter basis, definitely not where people are anticipating VinFast to be. And even more so, if the market was not FOMOing and rallying at this time, then VinFast would have sold off pretty significantly because factoring in all of this information, people are now going to be moving to this. So looking at the multiples. So right now the PS ratio is 13.5, has gone down dramatically since the high, I think, of around 299 um, overall. But even at this stage, 13.5, are they worth it? because other companies produce a ton and have better financing and backing, better balance sheets. And those companies such as even Rivian have a multiple of around four. So potentially VinFast does need to go down about 50 to 60% from these levels. That is if it's gonna be comparable to Rivian. Of course, VinFast seems to be doing absolutely everything like an SUV, damn bike, which they recently did unveil or I guess push into the US market. They also did do a truck so this was kind of unveiled no actual timeline for this but at the end of the day it is still one thing that VinFast is doing and the market most likely if they do pursue this or at least kind of allude to it in their upcoming earnings the market is going to punish them because in my opinion I'm not a financial advisor of course VinFast is kind of spreading themselves a little bit too thin which that does happen a lot of companies have a lot of ambition to kind of take over the world all in one swipe just it that's not how the market works. Also on a side note, they did disclose when their earnings are going to be. So February the 22nd, so that is on Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard. If you are interested in me live streaming that, I can definitely do so. Just let me know in the comments below. But aside from all of that fun jazz, let's go over some data points. So as of late, there's been no changes from any analysts for their upcoming earnings, no real analyst rating changes. The last one was done last month, and that was initiated by BTI. G Gregory, who does have a 44% success rating, gave a buy and a $10 price target. So overall, a lot of analysts are very ambitious and optimistic when it comes down to VinFast. And I think that has to do more so with who is backing it and their infrastructure, because in theory, they should be able to produce a roughly around 300,000 vehicles. But yet what did come out was kind of a fraction of that. So you can kind of see that they did deliver 13,513 in Q4, and they delivered a grand total of 42,000 vehicles. That's up until, I guess, their very first deliveries in 2021. So, all in all, this definitely is kind of good improvement, like I mentioned, but still not where they could be um, capacity wise. But most likely a lot of analysts will be giving ratings dependent on these upcoming earnings. So just anticipate that overall. And when it comes to shorts, surprisingly enough, they haven't done all that much. So they'll kind of scrape off all this unnecessary crap. Surprisingly, shorts have been returning. Um, so VinFast is kind of an interesting beast. They don't participate 
participate in FOMO rallies with the broader market and shorts seem to be leaving them alone. So I don't really know the basis or what is prompting that, but it is interesting. Um, as of right now, shorts are returning about 2,000 shares. 14.01% of the free flow is being shorted. 5.65 million shares overall are being shorted and cost of borrow average is 302.37%. So that is relatively high, something to kind of consider. Definitely not saying that VinFast is a squeeze play by any means, just it's a good benchmark to kind of look at. So the way I interpret this, by shorts not really doing all that much and VinFast selling off, might kind of see it as unjustified. But as I've done in the past, it is very good to look at options because this kind of shows what big money is doing behind the scenes. So as of right now, the market just opened about one hour ago, $17,000 in calls being purchased versus 101,000 in puts. Sentiment wise, 70% of all the options being done so far are bearish. So like I kind of mentioned, VinFast has been held up largely just because of the market's FOMOing. Whereas if that wasn't the case, VinFast probably would be pulling down. So right now the market is pulling back. So obviously it's going to really affect VinFast kind of twofold, if that makes sense. Looking at some of the call options that are being purchased, there is a consensus for it to be above 550 by the end of this week if not early next week. Looking at the put, so it is anticipated for it to be sub 450. So the risk versus return definitely isn't there. These are some of the transactions that have occurred on the secondary market above $100,000. So big money hasn't really been getting in. And I believe my last update was in 2023. I haven't actually covered VinFast so far in 2024, I don't believe. So ultimately big money has been taking a step back from even when I started to really cover it. Because back then I think it was kind of a hit and miss, right? It was hovering around the $10 range. A lot of the technical and everything else pointed to it going down, but you can tell that big money was buying at that stage. Maybe it did have something to do with a lot of the analyst ratings at that time, but then again, I, I don't know. Um, so aside from that though, you can tell that big money has been taking a step back. Right now with it at $5.16 or 15 cents, it is trading between this S2 and this S1. So in comparable to other growth stocks, it is lagging. Right now, $5.10 is gonna be that next strong support that you'll wanna watch for it to hold. Kind of bounced off of that today, so overall that's kind of a good thing. And then $5.20 is gonna be that next strong resistance. So right now I do feel it's just gonna be trading range bound between these two points, but I feel like the broader market is kind of seeing this as a overreaction. So VinFast and other EVs might actually get bought up potentially. So it might be trading between this S1 and the pivot, but still regardless, bigger picture, it has been lagging. So most likely it will continue to lag up until their upcoming earnings. So they'll be next week, I do believe, next Thursday or Friday, one of those two days. So hopefully they do give good future guidance for 2024 and just bigger and better things will be coming VinFast's way just right now from what I see, it's not really a buying opportunity. But then again, what do I know, right? I'm not a financial advisor, as I always say. Looking at momentum shows number of retail investors haven't really been doing that much because it is below zero. So that does mean that on still on a daily basis, it is losing investors. Looking at stochastic though, it is at eight. So if there's a good piece of news, AKA coming from their earnings or something else, then you are going to see a nice bump up in the stock price as value investors would really rush towards VinFast. So that kind of would be a good thing. There isn't any defined trend, so no deviation right now. So all in all, I feel like VinFast definitely does need to pull back down, but by doing so, that might even more incentivize value investors to get into VinFast. Let me know your thoughts on VinFast. Have you been buying? Have you been selling? What have you been doing with VinFast behind the scenes? And one final thing I just wanted to share with you, take advantage of this promo. As I always say, simply sign up for an account with Moomoo, throw $100 at it, and you get five free stocks. Each stock is valued up to $2,000. So take advantage of this. Link in the description below and also comments. With all that said, appreciate all of you watching.